Provence has a rich and varied historical past. The region has some of the best preserved examples of Roman remains in France from the Gallo-Roman period. Hitch your ride now with Wes and Dorothea French and we'll explore Gallo-Roman Provence together. In 52 BC, Julius Caesar defeated a confederation of Celts under the leadership of Vercingetorix here in Alesia, thus bringing all of Gaul under Roman control. This massive bronze statue of Vercingetorix, commemorating the Celts' heroic resistance to Roman imperialism, has become a modern-day symbol of fierce French nationalism. While scholars debate just how resistant the Celts were to Roman culture, the readers of the wildly popular French comic books Asterix have no doubt. The comics follow the imaginary adventures of the inhabitants of an unnamed Gallic village as they resist Roman occupation. Local tour guides Asterix and Obelisk will accompany us for a while. The Rhone River linked Roman Gaul to the Mediterranean. Vienne, located on this river, flourished in both the Gallo-Roman and medieval periods. The Cathedral of Saint Maurice was formerly the seat of the Bishop of Vienne. Construction of the cathedral lasted 500 years between 1052 and 1533. Under pressure from the French king, Pope Clement V held a council here in 1312 calling for the suppression of the Order of the Templars. As important as medieval Vienne was, the real architectural jewels of the city are Gallo-Roman. In particular, this temple dedicated to the imperial cult is one of the best preserved in Europe. The imperial cult was a way of expressing loyalty to the state. Like all Gallo-Roman cities of any size, Vienne had a theater. It was one of the largest in Gaul with the seating capacity of 13,000. Some scholars believe the indigenous Celts strongly resisted Romanization, depicted, as we have seen, by the Asterix comic book characters. However, in contrast, others note that some more urban Celts demonstrated a loyalty to Rome by building civic structures such as the temple and this large theater. Across the river is the Musée Archéologique and the Archaeological Park of saint romain Nangol. The area was a densely built-up residential and merchant quarter of Vienne. Excavations show the foundations of merchant stalls, workshops, religious shrines, and an elaborate bath complex. Located in the midst of both modest and luxury private dwellings. Nîmes was one of the largest Gallo-Roman cities in Gaul. Its civic architecture included an amphitheater that accommodated crowds of up to 25,000. The amphitheater is still used today for a modern version of the ancient public spectacles. After visiting the amphitheater, take a lunch break 
at one of the delightful outdoor cafes. Like the temple to the imperial cult in Vienna, this temple was located in the Forum. It was dedicated to the Emperor Agrippa, the patron of the colony of Nîmes. To supply water to the city of Nîmes, the Romans constructed an aqueduct to carry the water from its source 31 miles to the north. Here the aqueduct crosses the Gar River, where vacationers enjoy a variety of water sports. Most of the 31 miles of the aqueduct was a trench, but to cross the river Gar a bridge was needed. The Pont du Gar aqueduct is a remarkable surveying and engineering achievement. At 160 feet, it is the highest surviving bridge structure from the Roman world. Arles is a sun-drenched Provençal city with a long and historically significant past. The Hotel Calendal offers warm hospitality. Founded in the 8th century BC by the Greeks, the city reached its height under the Romans. Constructed in 46 BC, this is one of the largest Roman amphitheaters in existence, with the seating capacity of 26,000. After the Roman Empire collapsed, the city declined, and the amphitheater was used as a citadel, with approximately 200 houses clustered within its walls. In the 12th century, the city gained importance, becoming the capital of the Frankish Kingdom of Arles. The Church of San Trophim was constructed then. It was here that the Holy Roman Emperor Frederick Barbarossa was coronated when he added the Kingdom of Arles to his empire. The tympanum is one of the finest examples of the Southern Romanesque style. Today the city attracts visitors not only because of its ancient and medieval past, but because of its connection with Vincent van Gogh. He came here in 1888 and was so inspired by the bright light and colors of Provence, he produced over 200 canvases within 15 months, including one of this cafe. You can follow the footsteps of the artist throughout Arles and stand exactly where he stood to paint some of his most famous paintings. Van Gogh had a psychotic breakdown and after a brief period of hospitalization returned north to auvers sur oise near Paris in 1890. Begin your visit to Vaison la romaine by exploring the medieval upper village with its small quiet squares, stone houses, and narrow streets. Walk down the hill and cross one of the five remaining Roman bridges in France to the most extensive Gallo-Roman digs in France. We know how prosperous this city was because it had the largest concentration of luxury urban homes in Roman Gaul. Nearby, the outstanding archaeological museum, 
houses a small but first-rate collection of statues, tombstones, inscriptions that show us aspects of daily Gallo-Roman life. The real stars of the collection are statues of Roman emperors. This small provincial town is a jewel. Orange has the most beautiful surviving example of a provincial commemorative arch in France. It is decorated with military themes, such as reliefs of Roman soldiers battling Germans and Gauls. It commemorates Caesar's Roman legionnaires who settled here after they defeated the Gauls. Orange is a thriving regional center. The fields, orchards, and the great vineyards of the Côte du Rhône make it an important marketplace. Incidentally, the city was not named after a citrus fruit, but rather after one of its former ruling families. The first century theater was originally part of a grand municipal complex located next to a large temple and a gymnasium. While the temple and gymnasium are gone, the theater remains and is one of the best preserved Roman theaters in existence. A statue of the Emperor Augustus still stands in an arched niche above the stage center. The theater's acoustics are superb thanks to the massive stage wall, which is three stories high, the height of the seating area.